One of the uh, key examples that we like to talk about in algebraic topology is the torus. Um, there's uh, various different ways that we can uh, we can express this space, uh, and in this video we're going to have a look at a couple of different couple of different ways. So one thing we can do is we can take a square like this. So we've got this square, um, we've marked uh, two opposite edges in red and two opposite edges in green. And what we can do is we can glue together the two red edges like this, and that gives us a cylinder. And then we can bend the cylinder around like this uh, and join and you know, the two, uh, two green edges have become two circles and we now uh, glue those two circles together. And then we get this space here, which is the usual kind of model for the torus embedded in R3. So that's, uh, that's one way of thinking about the torus. Um, so now I'll have another look at a uh, slightly different way. Uh, we can think of the torus as being a quotient space of the plane. Okay, so uh, over here we've got the plane R squared. <coughs> and uh, inside R squared we've got the subgroup Z squared. And uh, we can form the quotient group R squared mod Z squared, where the, uh, the elements of R squared mod Z squared are, are cosets. Okay, so uh, coset of, uh, of Z squared and R squared is, a, you know, is like a, a rectangular array of equally spaced dots like this. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so here we go. Uh, I mean, here's one coset and we can kind of move it across. And now we get back to here and now we've got exactly the same coset again that we started with. And this is kind of uh, represented on the, on the torus over here, right? As we uh, um, as we take a, um, as we take this pattern over here and we move it around, then the dot moves around the torus. Okay, so now we've gone halfway around here, and the, uh, uh, the dot has moved back over to uh, uh, to there, and then you get uh, we move carry on moving around. And then the dot uh, dot reappears over here, and now we get back uh, back back to the original position. Okay, and uh, so being on the original position on the uh, on the torus here is the same as having restored the original coset. See, uh, even though the kind of individual dots have moved, we've ended up with the same re rectangular pattern of dots. In other words, the same coset, and that's what happened if we moved. Uh, if we move horizontally, and of course we can do the same moving vertically. Okay, so now we're we're changing the coset here, we've kind of uh, change it halfway around, and the corresponding dot on the torus has uh, gone into the middle of the gap there, um, and uh, we uh, we carry on moving the pattern of dots upwards, and when we get back to here, okay, so we've got the, now we've got the same as the original pattern of dots, and correspondingly the uh, the point on the torus is a return to its original position. So, yeah. <clears throat> so the idea is that uh, you, any kind of uh, possible rectangular array like this, so on the on the left hand side, that uh, yeah, the whole rectangular array of dots corresponds to a single dot on the on the torus picture here. And uh, this uh, this is illustrating a, uh, a homeomorphism between the quotient space R squared mod Z squared and this uh, torus embedded in R three. <clears throat> 